we might be towing and mixing two different conversations in one between All Star and then also the conversations about X player being better than these other players, which can be can be looked at as two different conversations. Um, I did not like when they all five four Hawks or whatever the case be uh, uh, become All Stars. I hated that. It was stupid. That to me was absolutely stupid. And then I think, if I'm not mistaken, I'm looking at it now. One, two, three, four. They let four, but they didn't let five. So I didn't even understand the reason for doing that. Um, I don't have names off the top of my head. I can look through it, but right in the East deserve to be all stars over Kyle Corver that year. Like it's not. It, that's not like a crazy thing to say. And also, let me say this. The conversation is about all stars, right? I think that, honestly, uh, uh, what's his name? Adam Silver. Step down, rig it up. I do not want to see some of these no-name dudes, and, and I know I'm going to get the Celtics. Oh, b how could you sit there and let Omar say that Derek White is a no-name? Fuck that nigga compared to Trey Young. I'm going to just say it. Fuck that nigga compared to Donovan Mitchell. I'm going to just say it. Fuck that nigga compared to Dame. I'm going to just say it. You got rising stars coming, all stars coming up in Tyrese Maxey and Tyrese Halliburton. That's real. That's real. We can push some of these guys. Hey, y'all can have that fight in another episode. We can push for some of these guys, advocate for some of these guys that we know aren't on that level all you want. But like b so said, what's wrong with just saying these are good players? There are levels to this shit. Yeah. All stars. I'm not seeing Derek White. You know, yeah, they're gonna say I'm caping for Trey Young. I, I'm not seeing Derek White do what Trey Young is doing. Yeah, Trey Young's putting up like 35 and 15. Yeah, I don't know how. Years. Yeah, I, that's the one name I'll, I'll probably say. No cap. I don't Y'all see Trey Young doing a lot of things that Derek White does on the basketball court. I mean, I, I get the sense of it. I get where you're coming from. I definitely understand, and I think it's whack as fuck that the NBA does that. But I didn't think we were here to debate our feelings on what the NBA does. I thought we were just looking at it based off of what the NBA – I'm going by historically what the NBA does. I'm I, I'm not no. here to argue what I personally feel. I'm going by – I'm just thinking oh. logically based off of the NBA, just like with the MVP race. I just think based on not what I think the MVP should be or what I feel the MVP should be, I go based off what the NBA has shown me historically. And historically, they have shown the one and two seed, there's a guy who is impacting winning. And we can sit there and say, oh, a forward or a big gets snubbed. I mean, if every year they, they're telling you six guards are coming, they're going to give you six guards. If there's a set number, a finite number of guards, I don't think they're snubbing another position. I think they're going to snub a guard. I, I think that's just going to happen. A guy that's mm-hmm. lower on the pole in terms of winning because they do take winning into it, he's going to get snubbed for it. And like, they're white. And I, that, that is a normality in the NBA. That's something we just – we got to live with. They're, unless we're starting a petition to change it, that's just what the NBA does. This yes, like, is going to Jason Kidd. This is going to sound like crazy hate, but I'm calling it as I see it. Derek White's make the All Star game historically when other players get injured and or were injured. For being very blunt about it, and a lot of players this season, to my knowledge, at least, were relatively healthy, especially the I end players. Uh, a lot of role players have gone down. We, this is weird, actually. Yeah, it has been a healthy season, but um, especially in the Eastern Conference. I'm almost at 16 with a couple of minutes. I'll be done here. But um, yeah, now that I'm really thinking about it, nah, he probably ain't he probably ain't gonna make it here. So right right now, who I have some debatable. Um, I'm on the spot right now. Some of these are debatable, but most of these I think we all agree. Come on now, be real. Jalen Brown, because someone said I didn't name names. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Giannis, Dame, Maxi. That's five. Hope we all agree on the five. The next five. This is in order of standings, obviously. Uh, Joel Embiid, Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, D. Mitch, Jalen Brunson. That's 10. Hall- Therese Halliburton, Tyrese Halliburton, sorry. Mikhail Bridges, Trey Young, LaMelo Ball, Kane Cunningham. That's 15. LaMelo then, Ball's injured, so you can take him out of there. Yeah, you can take LaMelo out, and there we go to prove my point. But uh, <laughs> So I, I, I guess if you want, I guess if we would take out LaMelo, you have a conversation at literally 15. 15, 16, 17, because that's when you start introducing, and like, I, I, Apollos. I that's when you start introducing, do you want to give Paolo the uh, the nod? Do you want to give uh, Hero the nod? Do you want to give Siakam the nod? Do you want to give um, – there's there's several other names. I think one of those names would likely overcome that. But um, at that point, like like I said, at least, 
Um, Derek White's make it typically when we get injured. No, Maxi, I, I said Maxi. Chat, use your ears. This this just feels like a a whole like when people say, Yo, KD's top ten all time. Okay, where you got him ranked <laughs> at ten. And they just <laughs> never argue anything else. He's top ten, but he's ten though. Like I, I I get it. I get it. They again this it's a title thumbnail thing. They're trying to get the headline out there. It's working though. It's working though. Um you, shout out to Dead Boys too. What is the set number of like position? Opposition they do for the All Star game because I, I know they allow a certain number it's, of it's like it's, it's, it's for back court and front court. I is think it, center is the only one that's pretty locked at two, three, uh, I, really two. I'm part. looking at what appears to be twelve, but it doesn't end up being twelve because of injury replacements. And there's years where they have special or whatever the case may be because of uh, yeah. like Dirk was a special. Yeah, Dirk uh, and years years retiring yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, so stuff oh, like that, but. Mm. It looks like it's 12. Um, 12 players in total? That's what it looks like, yeah. 12, 12 okay. players. In, like, for, you know, each each uh, yeah, yeah, each conference or whatever. Yeah, yeah, each yeah. players get 12 total. I mean, I get it. Dominant in his dominant in his role. Good, great guy. Um, we're getting the winning boost or whatever. I guess you get the winning boost here. That's do, really do, what they, it is. do you that, get the winning? Cool. And, and mind you, I, I hear what you're saying, Damar. We, we, I understand it. I'm I'm saying that I don't like it. I did not like it. It was cool at the time. Yo, Hawks got four players in there. Da 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 da. Don't know why they didn't stay consistent and put Damari Carroll in it. I I, I really don't get that one. But you know, it's cool <laughs> that they got four players in it. That's fine. Um, but in reality, looking back at it, I, I got to go back and look at 2015. There might have been somebody in the uh in the East that was averaging 45 points and didn't get it because the Hawks uh, cleared January. And, and then they got the February nod. Eat a fucking dick. Can I ask, what is an NBA All Star? Like, what does it mean to be an All Star? One of, the, I mean, because, because I, I'm because I feel what, like, what, what, yeah, I don't. I'm about to say, what do you define that as? I thought, I, no, no, like, I don't even think it's about what I define. And I think that's the issue here. I think the NBA. I think fans have started to define what the NBA All Star is different than what the NBA is defined at this point. I don't know. I think there's been a disconnect somewhere. Because historically, that winning bullshit matters to the NBA in terms of All Stars. Because the All Stars just like the MVP, just like it's a year by year thing. But for whatever reason, they religiously stick to winning success will boost it. So if you have a team that is a one seed, for whatever reason, they're giving you more than one, definitely a lot of times more than two players coming from that team for whatever reason. Especially if it, if they're gapping everybody else. Mm-hmm. So that has historically been the thing. Maybe we are just maybe us, whatever, even if my definition is different than your definition, Sage, and our definition is different than B Souls, and B Souls is different than Omar. I think all fans have a different definition than the NBA I, at this point. Because I agree, Omar, it doesn't make sense. It is whack as fuck that Mo Williams can make an all-star game because he's playing with LeBron James with a 61 team, but just because it's LeBron James. So like somebody else has to be all-star. It was whack that for that the Celtics big four was making it. And Rondo was just being thrown in that bit. I forgot about that. It was just a dominant team. So I was like, nah, I mean, hey, got to get Rondo too. Hey, got to go to Doe too. Like, no, I, I, mean, I get it. But all four of these niggas should not be here. But the NBA has religiously done that. I, I don't want to overspeak. I don't want to speak out of turn to be wrong. But if I go back and look at these all-star teams in the 80s and 90s, and even the 2000s, if at the tail end of those rosters, I'm starting to find guys who were the third guy for a team or second guy for a team who was just there because of team success. We have a general pattern spanning from decades. So that, that is what it is to be an all being an all-star, it's also being a very impactful player or having a very large impact on winning teams. That is a part of being an all-star to the NBA. But I just think the, the winning boost though, it only it not only, but it matters more so when we're talking about let's say the, the point guard on the one seed averaging 15 and 8. Compared to the point guard on the six seed averaging sixteen and five, type shit, or or the other way around, like the the lower seed having the better stats. But when it comes to the Derek White conversation, I don't think that applies because even historically speaking, like they weren't putting Kobe, um, they weren't they weren't putting like I don't even know who who was the the starting point guard or starting shooting guard on the Spurs in the mid two thousands. Um, that was that. Like probably Bruce, Bruce Bonner and Manu Ginobili. Like they weren't putting Manu over Kobe just because, hey, the Spurs had 60 wins while Kobe's putting 35. In this conversation, I understand what you're saying. 
Derek White is putting up like 18, 4, and 4, while the competition is putting up 25 points a game. And I still think, historically speaking, like, there's a certain level of uh, statistic production that, like, okay, I understand the winning matters, but I'm still not going to put you over the dude putting up 25 a game. And when you look at all the names in contention, Maxi, Brunson, uh, mm-hmm. Halliburton, Dame, Trey, uh, you can even extend it to Tyler Hero at this point because he's averaging 24. Um, LaMelo, when he was healthy, like, these are 24, 25 point per game scorers on top of being you know, uh, good to elite playmakers um, that he's in discussion with. So I, I just don't think that applies. Yeah, to add on to my initial 15, there's even other names. Hell, one on his own team because a lot of people go around saying KP's the second best player in Boston. Um, just just saying at that point, what's up? But uh, you also have guys like Siakam, who's averaging 20, Hero, who's having very efficient seasons. The Cavs are disappointing, but Darius Garland isn't playing that bad. And Cam Thomas is one of the other names at that point, if we really want to talk about it. He's averaging like 22 and 4. So I, I just think at some point, when we're talking the difference of 10 a game, some of these players, 10 a game and defensive impact, it's like, all right, I don't know but, how far we're going. But, that's just, but that's these guys me. that we're naming, these guys that we're naming and we're even saying has a contention, they really don't. Again, Derek White's biggest case is his impact on winning the things he's able to do as a two-way player. These guys you want to name, if you want to name a Tyler Hero, Fine. Tyler Hero's averaging 24 points on good efficiency. He's not the defender that Derek White is. He doesn't have the impact on winning that Derek White has. And he's damn sure not no elite playmaker. He's a mid playmaker. So this is a guy that can get a bucket and he does it very well. I'm not trying to delegate it to just, oh, he gets the bucket. Um, Hey, that's absolutely fine. But again, if the biggest case is a winning boost and Derek White and over Porzingis, who he's played more games than Porzingis and has a bigger impact on winning on that team than Porzingis, I don't see why... Cam Thomas, again, health isn't there compared to uh, Derek White. He uh, he had a stretch where he was injured. And, again, his defense, atrocious. He can get a bucket, definitely a better scorer. Not going to argue that. But if being a better scorer is all it is and you don't have the impact on winning, then, yeah, no. I, I can't – I don't think it's a conversation in terms of historically what we've seen. A guy like Darius Garland, again, health, he, he hasn't played any games as Derek White, and he's not the two-way player Derek White is. His defense is nowhere near – what we need to be talking about in terms of impact. And he's not outperforming. He, I mean, significantly is is wild, I, I guess. Think better, I think he's a better offensive player. I, 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 I mean, he, he, that's fine. That's fine. If Darius Garland was able to come off the bench in Boston, I think he would, like, outside of the defensive impact, very Derek much. White's not coming off the bench in Boston. He's averaging 32 minutes well, a game. I, I, well, my bad. I didn't say off the bench. If Derek White's role, because sometimes, like, I mean, they, they're starting him now because he's fucking out playing Drew. But, like, for the most part, if um if he was in a situation where he is the third, sometimes fourth option, getting the fourth attention, and at times definitely being the guy that helps run the bench unit because they don't they don't just, like, instant start or swap. Um, if he was able to do that in Boston, he'd be much more efficient. So, and he's not not that he's not efficient right now. He's averaging 21 and he's averaging 21 and six on 47, 34 from three on five attempts. So I don't think that. Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty comfortable saying Darius Garland's a better offensive player. I would even go as far as say significant, as I said earlier, than Derek White. Now, if you want to argue the defensive gap makes up, if you want to argue the winning gap makes up. That's fine. But I think him beating not only that bottom five tier names I just mentioned, but then the other 15 names I mentioned above. For him to win both debates, I think is a little um, – I think that's just reaching at straws even, just to put a role player in because he's at the one seed. But Pers- even uh, – hey, and I feel – personally, I agree with you. But personally, the NBA don't care what we personally think. They have a they have a system that they go by. And yeah. even if we're talking about a guy like – the guy you mentioned, Mikael Bridges, looking at what Mikael's doing, he's not drastically outshining what – Derek White's doing. Mikel Bridges is seen as a that's two-way that, but player. But that's what I'm talking about tour. with the number like, one oh, shit, though. That, that's how you say it. It's absolutely, I understand there's different. There's differences in terms of their roles and what they do. But at the end of the day, when they're putting these guys into the All-Star thing, they're not really taking into account everybody's role. They're not putting every bit of context into it of every guy's role. They're going to look on paper what he's doing, what he's doing, and compare them like that. They might throw a little bit of context in there, but they're not about to kill you with the context. So I'm just looking at how, to, how I perceive the NBA looks at it. If we're going taking away the fan vote and the coach vote, it's, it's what your numbers are and what you're doing to impact your team. And on paper, he has a case for being more impactful for his team winning, seeing how one team's a one seed, the other team's what? The the Nets are a nine seed right now? Like, I, he has a case. I'm just saying, I'm not agreeing and saying that it's fair or that it's right. I'm just saying historically what we've been given 
this nigga has a case to be a, a, a reserve. I'm not saying starter. If JJ Reddick is saying he should start, he's a goddamn idiot. I'm, I'm saying that now. He's an idiot. <laughs> Derek White should not be a starter. Artist, I'm not saying he's a starter, but I do see a world where when you look at the end of it, look at the end of that roster, I can see a name like Derek White with the season that he's having and how he's been playing. I can if, see if- if Derek White starts, and I'm <laughs> last thing I'm gonna say, if Derek White, if Derek White is in the All Star game, Jaden McDaniels should be in the All Star game. Then that's a fact because Jaden McDaniels is 100 percent mirroring a Derek White season without a shadow of a doubt. And if that's going to be what we're doing here, where the one seeds just going, where the where the uh, one seeds best role player is going to be in there, then there's no way a player who's averaging 11 playing at very impressive defense if you watch the team. I mean, they're literally the best defensive team in basketball, and he has superb efficiency at that. So if Jaden McDaniels doesn't make it, but um, mm-hmm. Derek White does make it, and Jaden McDaniels doesn't have consideration because, yes, obviously I would have to name the names. Fair enough, keep the same energy. But at the end of the day, if names like those, if a name like that doesn't come out of the West, then obviously we were just talking for clicks. You, but you know, you know the problem with that, though? Just real quick, Omar, I'm going to let you know. I'm going to talk like crazy. The only issue with saying a guy like Jaden McDaniels deserves to be in the same grace as Derek White, which I agree in theory. When you look at it, the reason why he won't is because the three for that team is um, Edwards, Cat, and fucking Rudy Gobert. Now, now, Rudy Gobert, who potentially might get his fourth defensive player of the year, in terms of how great of a defender Jalen McDaniels is, he's not the best or most impactful defender on his team, and that would be the case against him. It's a guy on his rivaling the nigga too. It, 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 who? You could say the same for the Celtics. Lou, Lou, Dor- Lou, Dor- Lou Dor- is doing everything but playmaking for, for Dor- uh, Thunder as well. Lou, Lou, Dor- Lou Dor is averaging 11 and 4 on 45 42. Or 44, 45 44, actually. What? I mean, yeah, shout out Lou Dor. What? What, what did I do with their yeah? Right? That's that's what I'm saying. I'm saying if one of these role players at the high seed should, should get a mention at the end of the day, shit, man. Like I'm just saying, I'm just saying if if it's just a matter of winning and being efficient, either on the bench or for the for the uh team, if it's just a matter of being a good defender, an all around player, and winning basketball games, a guy like Lou Dort is in consideration as well. Because and, at but, the end of the day, these nigga, that nigga is averaging 11 points, playing defense, winning games, and he's efficient as fuck. So and, I'm and, the and, and, consistency. And I'm gonna be I'm gonna be nasty with this. Like we're I'm getting nasty, but we're gonna be we're nasty. gonna be we're gonna move on in a second. I'm being nasty with this. If the Timberwolves win out in January, fuck it, all five of them should go, right? <laughs> like, I'm just saying, bro. It, it, honestly, I think I think, and I, I know this has happened in the past, but I'm a, I'm gonna kill them for letting the Hawks go. Them niggas, the niggas won out in January. <laughs> I think nobody was averaging 20 points or whatever. If the Timberwolves win out in January, Rudy Gobert. Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Edwards, Mike Conley, and Jaden McDaniels. All five of them should go. Fuck it. I think all four should go. I think the four should go. Mike Conley will ask to sit down somewhere. Mike Conley. I, would, <laughs> I, would, I would be mad at the four. Like if, if they went out and seeing how and seeing the gap in the West with them being a one seed, I would not be mad if all four of them went. It would it would follow the trend of what the NBA does. I'm I wouldn't yes. be mad. Like, that's okay. the NBA. 